Hello and welcome, everyone, to Good Old Rocky Talk, a Vol Society podcast. I'm your host, Brad, here with my partners, the Davids. We're glad you're listening wherever you are. This is Good Old Rocky Talk. Hello and welcome back to another episode of Good Old Rocky Talk. I am your host, Brad Frank. Here with my partners, David Dees and David Morrison. How you doing, guys? Doing good, Brad. Good evening to you, sir. Good doing evening good, to man. you as well. Excited to be uh, celebrating a victory this week. Woo! Well, I tell you what, guys, I'm feeling pretty dang good today. All right? I felt good all weekend. Well, let me take that back. We'll t- well, well, we'll go into this a little bit later. Um, my body's just now recovering. Let's put it that way. After after that game Saturday night, um, did you hang out with some week. Georgia fans and their? Uh... Oh, it has <laughs> nothing. Here's the thing. No, don't think I was like drinking your neighbor or who, uh, had played a drinking game last week. No, I don't. See, I don't have to do that. No, it it wasn't because of drinking. No, it wasn't that at all. No, my body feels like a 95 year old man come Sunday morning. I'm going to tell you why. And and you tell me if there has to be other fans out there like this. In fact, I know David Dees is one of them because I didn't even say anything to David Dees. I woke up Sunday morning and I got a text from David um, and it cracked me up and I couldn't wait to like share it with my wife. I said, Megan, see, that's my wife, by the way, Megan, shout out to my wife. Um, I said, see, I am not the only crazy Tennessee fan. Like other people like feel this way. And she just cannot, but she's not from the South. She's from the Northeast and where that, you know, it's just not the same unless you're born and raised in the South. People just don't understand the toll that it can have on the bod, as I call it. My wife always says, God, don't call it the bod, (laughs) but I like to call it the bod. It may be a dad bod and oh, it's a dad bod all the way these days, baby. But here's the thing. We won that game. We're going to go, we're going to do a deep dive real quick into that pit game. But if you saw the game, it was crazy. And as a Vol fan, you, you had to have been going nuts. I was sweating. I was jumping up and down. I was mad at times. I was kicking. I was running. I was screaming. And by the time, and, and by the way, why do our games seem to last 10 hours? I feel like they're, they're the longest games ever. It's all the fake injuries. And after that game, because of what? The fake injuries. That's a good point. But after that game, I, I, I told my wife when it was over, I said, God, I, I really feel like I just worked out for like five hours in the gym. And the next day, I was no good to anyone. I had pulled muscles. I even pulled some fat. I didn't even know you could pull fat. <laughs> yeah, man, it'll take a toll on you. Being a oh, it's bad. Your, your battered ball syndrome kicks in very often in the middle of one of those games as you start to see momentum swing, and here we go again. And it's an emotional roller coaster, but it's uh, yeah, it's still I wouldn't trade it for anything. No, I wouldn't either. I might die from it one day, but right now, you know, the doctors say I'm under control with my blood pressure meds and whatever else I need, and. uh You know, I just had a revisit at the doc. He said, what are you doing here? I said, well, listen, football's got a big game this Saturday. I need to make sure the bod's ready to go. That's how serious we take it here. All right, guys, listen. Let's talk about it real quick. Tennessee goes on the road and plays its first big road game. And I'm going to tell you, we talked about this. We had a lot of fans. I was listening on other shows today as well. Tony Basilio in particular. I love that show. Uh, it's, he's got a great radio show every day. Um, and he said it best. He said, you know, I'm going to tell you guys, these, uh, you know, he said last week fans were calling in saying, oh, we're going to, we're going to, we're just going to romp pit. We're going to kill him. And, and Tony said, really? Okay. If that's, if that's where you're at. Sure. But Tony said it best. He said, um, He said, I knew this was going to be a close game because the truth is Pitt is a very good team. And we saw that Saturday night. David, these? Yeah, I I think I said in episode one of our podcast, this was the game for me. um, Maybe not the toughest game of the year, but this is the biggest game of the year because there was, it was going to be an early hurdle in the season. 
on yep. the road against a ranked opponent, defending ACC champions. I knew their whole defense was back. Uh, they, they're excellent at getting after the quarterback. Make it tough for you to run on them. And what we didn't know was how good Pittsburgh offense was going to be this year. And we saw very early in that game with Keaton Slovis in there healthy, uh, they were they were moving up and down the field on us pretty well. Our red zone defense came up big a few times there in the beginning to, to, to kill one of those yeah. opening drives. But, uh, yeah, it was definitely a challenge and one that we had marked on our calendar. And we knew if we could win it and get over that hump early, it could set us up for the rest of the season. And here we are. We got a huge game oh. coming up here in a couple of weeks now that we can enjoy. I know. I know. Uh, definitely. That Akron game is going to be such a great game. You know, there, there's a lot of talent on that team. And, uh, oh, wait, are you talking about Akron or Florida? Sorry. Just kidding. Guys, listen. First thing I want to say about that pit game, okay? Two years ago, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, okay? Two years ago, that kind of a game right there, we lose that game. Yes or no? Even last year. You look at what happened last year. Lost that well, game last yes. year. But in particular, especially two years ago, heck, three, four, five, six, seven, I can keep going. Okay? Those kind of games with certainty, we lose those games. And we and we have. Yeah. That was the norm yeah. for the volunteers. We We never could figure out a way to win. But guess what? Josh Heupel figured it out. And I couldn't be happier. Did we play awesome? Did we play great? No, not really at all. Especially that first, you know, that first half. No, no, we didn't. But we found a way to win. And to me, that means so much to me. Okay. Um, like I said, you know, it wasn't pretty, but I would rather have an ugly win than an ugly loss. Morrison. Yeah, you you hit all the uh, points there uh, about that game Saturday. Um, that was my biggest takeaway is, you know, it, we've seen this time and time again of getting into these highly emotional games and how many times in the decades plus have we come away disappointed after disappointments. Like, why couldn't we get that win? Why couldn't we? I was happy to see Tennessee – you know, get into a scrap fight pretty much with Pittsburgh. And we didn't put up 40-plus points in this game. Yeah. But Josh Heifel and this staff found a way to – they got into an ugly game, got into an ugly situation – well, not an ugly situation, but a, into a battle with a top-20 program right. and found a way to win it at the end. I mean, when we were given the <laughs> – there were at times we were giving the game away to Pitt. I mean – I mean, you looked at the block punt uh, that Paxton Brooks uh, had on him, and uh, Flowers fumbled the punt return. Yes. Uh, I mean, and then just uh, Kenneth George uh, not covering well in the back of the end zone. But like I said, this team did not give up, and that's what makes me happy with this team is if, you know – Years after years after years, it seems like you know this team's kind of had a little bit of a losing mentality, a uh, mindset. It felt like they kind of flipped the switch and like, let's find a way if we can pull this out. And there's at times, like I said, just a, a few seconds ago, yeah, we were trying to give the game away to Pitt, but I was happy to see the leadership uh, with the coaching staff, with the players, whether it was Hendon Hooker or uh, Cedric Tillman or whoever. Like, let's let's go in there and let's win this game. And going into overtime, you saw the touchdown pass to Cedric Tillman. And then on third and 10, we brought the house to uh, Nick Patty and threw him down and set up a big fourth down, which, I mean, it was a stressful fourth and 10, and he missed time as receiver. But like I said, it was – I was happy to see this team, you know, find a way to grind out a win. And yeah. it's been way too long. And like I said, first road win against a non-conference opponent that was ranked yeah. since 2003 when we went down to Miami. And Miami was at the top of their game. So, you know, you look at 19 years of, you know, like I said, we've been, we played several neutral site games in that 20-year span. But, you know, you know, the disappointing loss at Cal in 07. The next year that we lost at UCLA. 
you know, we were totally outmatched at, at Oregon in 2013, and now right. here's in Oklahoma the next year, uh, and now you go to Pittsburgh, a game that we were favored to win. But like I said, we, we knew, and I called it, it was going to be a nail-biter, and it surely was. It, I mean, you Morrison called it, folks. Well, Go back the last week. This is why David Morrison <laughs> is my I, senior Vol Society analyst, yeah. folks. Well, I kind of saw. I said we'd win. You know, I said we'd win by ten, but I I thought we'd have control of the game for the most yeah. part. Morrison says, "Yeah, you might be the founder, but I'm going to tell you something. <laughs> it's going to be a nail." What, what I and he was right. It's, it's Josh Heupel's first huge win. He beat Kentucky Absolutely. last year, but we expect to beat Kentucky. This is the first one that you can actually like point to Correct. as you're building your program and say this was a, a huge hurdle to get over, and we did it. And he did it by by his defense beating the hell out of a quarterback for four quarters. How long has it been since we've seen our defense I, get those kind of shots did. on the quarterback? And that's did. what excites me about it. We did it in such a um, such a way that that get, got to give us confidence because that's not what we that's not necessarily been our bread and butter or what you would think of with Josh Heupel. Yeah, but his team was no. put in a situation where that. Their, their offense was struggling to score points, and the defense came up big. And so that's just something Huge. That you can really build on. Huge. Uh, love to see it happen that way. And we talked about this, I think it was on Vol Society Live um, last Wednesday, Morrison. Uh, we, we were, I think we were asking people, how many sacks are we going to get or something in the game? Yeah, and it started it with was. two, three, and then we had one of our, one of our favorite guests, John B., he said, uh, five. I mean, he just kept going up, and Morris said, God, why don't we just go to 10? And I'm sitting here going, Psh, you guys are crazy. We're not going to do that. That's ins- I haven't seen that. And if I'm correct me if I'm wrong, did, we ended up with like four sacks. Am I right on that, or am I wrong? And I think those uh, were right by four, four sacks. Yeah. Okay, four sacks. Trevon Flowers, Wesley Walker, I think Byron Young, and Tyler Baron. Wesley Walker. He he yes. had a, he had a big one in the second quarter. Let me yeah. tell you right now, man. Defense bald, especially when they needed to. They made big plays when they needed to. Hey, and hey, listen, let's give it up. Can we give it up real quick for Aaron Beasley? Oh man, yes. Come on, God. Probably been the best defensive player the first two games of the season. Seven tackles, laid the wood on that quarterback Saturday night. I also I loved you. what we got out of Kamal Haddon at cornerback. He was oh, he was yeah. fantastic at corner. He's fantastic. he's our best corner on the roster. I, no question. Good point. Good point. And then on offense, if Tillman doesn't have two of those drops, he's he's got the all time receiving record in the game. You know, just. Tillman and Hooker, and you look at him, you're thinking, man, these guys are really struggling. And then you turn around, and Hennon Hooker's the offensive player of the week in the SEC. So that just goes to show they left a lot out there, and he's still the SEC offensive player of the week. What does that That's say? It's pretty impressive, man. Yeah. It's, it's pretty very impressive. impressive. But no, you're right. Going into receiving, you know, Tillman, you know, I, before I saw the, the stats, I thought, man, Tillman, he was just, he had an off night. Not great. And of course, I'm going back to some of those catches he, he should have had. Which wasn't like Tillman, but we all have bad, bad days. However, you look at the stats, still not bad. He still led the team with nine receptions, 162 yards. But yeah, he had a couple of key drops. I didn't like those, but you know what? We found a way to win. What do you think of the rushing game? I wasn't, again, not impressed with our R- rushing R- game. Run blocking now. struggled. And, uh, you know, we stayed yes. behind the chains in that game because of it. Yes. Fortunately, we recovered with short yardage situations. If it was third and one, third and two, we were able to pick it up. But, sure. But uh, first downs, man, we, we really struggled first and second downs Struggle. running the football. And that's what I think really was the main cause for our offense struggling and, and being out of Bingo. rhythm is they just stayed behind the chains so often. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Jalen Wright, he led the team in, in rushes. Nine carries, for 47 yards. 47 yards. You're right, Morrison. Nine carries for 47. That's got to get better. I mean, we. Yeah. I miss – I know it's, football is a different game than it once was when we had the big Jamal Lewis's and Travis Henry's and Stevens. But uh, we'll talk about that later. There's some questions when we go to the mailbox about, you know, certain things we can improve on. But certainly, you know, 
Well, no, rushing. We need to we need to figure some stuff out there. But and no, here, Hooker continues he, to impress, right? Oh, fantastic! Got to get him more touches. We got to get we do. And his size, man, that's a, that's he is a beast. He we is. have to get the ball to him more. He's a big guy. That is deadly having him and Tillman. Oh gosh, but I agree. We have to get the ball to him more, and hopefully we will start doing that. But yeah, Hooker, he had a good night. Not bad. 27 to 42, I believe, 325 yards, two touchdowns, and guess what? Still no interceptions. Is That's this what guy, I love about him. He plays with poise and he doesn't. Is this panic. guy gonna go last year? What did he do? He he was tied for second in the league, right? For interceptions. You know, only threw three? three picks all last year. Yeah. Is he gonna do this again? I mean, you, you, there's no I way. Hope so. <laughs> there's no way. I just his keep confidence thinking to like make that, that play there in overtime that passed to Tillman. Okay. So there's not many. And that guys takes me to that. my final point. Good, good point. These takes me to my final point with, uh, which is we've already talked about it a little bit. Well, a lot, but we found a way to win and we stuck it out all the way to the end. And that's where Hooker. That's why he deserves that Player of the Week. Okay, because this guy came in, even though he didn't play his best game early on, he came in when it mattered in overtime with confidence and poise. And I mean, overtime was so fun to watch. I just, we dominated overtime and it was so great to see. I'm not used to that, Morrison. I'm not used to seeing this. No, not at all. I mean, it was fantastic. I mean, it just proves, you know, those two years when he was at Virginia Tech and played in some big games and, uh, and now coming over to Tennessee I mean, a brand new offense, an up-tempo offense, what he was not familiar with playing for the Hokies, but he picked it up very nicely, very in, uh, intelligent as far as football IQ yeah. goes. And and, and like I said, I think Hendon Hooker, you know, once his Tennessee career is done at the end of the year, I hope fans will go back and look how and appreciate where he come in at. Like I said, the Tennessee program was starting – you know, hopefully we we're trying to build up to something and, you know, won seven games last year and now going on the road in a hostile environment and through 325 yards, uh, two touchdowns, one, like you said, one SEC offensive player of the week, uh, QBR rating of 82.5. It's just amazing. Just, and he hasn't, like I said, this is what his, um, I'm terrible at math right now, but you know he doesn't have but twenty less than twenty starts at Tennessee, and he's just putting That's up incredible. great numbers. I yeah. mean, he's going to go down as one of the all-time great quarterbacks at Tennessee, and, and like I said, Tennessee fans really appreciate him right now. And once the years go by, uh, I really can't wait to see how his legacy can impact future generations uh, of quarterback play at Tennessee. I mean, everybody looks towards Peyton. And before that, he's Shuler and Congress Holloway and on and on and on. I could, and, and even I could throw Josh Dobbs in that mix. I think Henry Hooker stands out on his own uh, of what he has brought to this program. And we should wow. be very grateful for it. And, you know, three interceptions pretty much in his career. In, and that was all last year. And like I said, here we go, two games. Mm. Uh, yeah, Ball mm-hmm. State was a not much of an opponent. But like I said, going to Pitt – you know, he, he did throw some high passes overall, but like I said, his poise and confidence of getting the ball to the receivers, and like I said, he hopes that his receivers can make that reception. And guys, we'll move on after this. We've, we've talked for almost 20 minutes about that pit game, as we should. Huge win. Biggest win in our program in a decade. I want to bring something up real quick, and we'll move on, I promise. Heupel's been here. This is his second year. I just got to bring this up. Remember where we were a couple of years ago, guys, and to where we are now. I think sometimes we might forget about that with everything going on. It is incredible if you think about the turnaround and how quick it's happened. I mean, I, I, I don't know. I think that's important to think about. You know, we want to be this dominant team and, and back and relevant. 
And we are relevant already. I mean, we are ranked 15th in the nation. Think about this. This should excite you. This should validate how good Heupel is. Okay? His second year, he hasn't even completed two years here. And he's already got us at 15 right now. Yeah, and I've mentioned this on Ball Society Live last year and when we saw the build of this season. And we talked about the leadership and P- and the players buying into it. You know, we, the previous coaching staff, it was like a, a, a dictatorship military base pretty much. They, you know, certainly kids were the getting, recruiting was good. Well, you know, <laughs> thank you. Uh, thank you. That's Phil a Philip former reference. athletic director. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> In case you don't remember that. God, that is so what? Hey, man, goodness. I love the man for what he's done at Tennessee over the years. He got us a national championship, but you go back and look at that whole, uh, you can find it on YouTube when, uh, Donde Plowman's there and Philip Fulmer, athletic director, and they're releasing, you know, the, I'm not going to say his name. I'll yeah. J P I'll say that coach J P I'm not going to say his name cause he's a joke. Yeah. MTV and they ask him, they ask, uh, Philip what he, thought about everything and yeah that was his one liner he said well certainly uh recruiting's been good <laughs> as they're there to announce that they've been turning things yeah. over to the NCAA about recruiting violations so perfect <laughs> it's all about recruiting violations but yes <laughs> recruiting's been great Phil <laughs> God that was classic you tell great. him Phil you tell him Phil thanks for bringing us a national championship but I don't thank you for being athletic director. Yeah. But anyways, getting back to positivity. <laughs> no, I mean, it's a good point we y'all digress. brought up. Sorry, but, you know, go ahead. one thing I love about this coaching staff, and we mentioned it too, is like the, they're really teaching these kids. They're breaking down kind of fun. It's fundamentally, but, you know, they're not, there's no yelling. There's no screaming, no cussing. Yeah. It's just like. Well, they, they want to play for him, right? Absolutely. Yeah. And that's I what mean, kids want today. I mean, that's what you, everybody wants. Yeah. You don't want to be feared and, you know, you don't want to fear Ronnie, your, your leader, right. your coach. You know, that, that stuff doesn't, you know, work anymore. No. You want to no. buy in. You want to play for someone that you, you truly care about and you know they care about you. That's what's happening there. Yeah. It's and, that simple. And it's a family atmosphere. And, and at the end of the game, you saw Josh Heifel just, you know, bear hugging, jumping on top of – uh, a couple of his players, and then oh, was great. saw them dancing in the locker room and celebrate. And then, uh, yeah, we've saw that before with other coaches. But I mean, this just this felt different. Yeah, it it, it felt authentic. different. It felt like, I mean, it, it's it's emotional just thinking about it. You know, just what tell them, this David. program tell was them. two years ago, rock bottom. Yes, you sir. know, kind of you know players leaving the program. You had a you know kind of. Uh, nameless players just had a jersey number, and now they've become household names in a span of a you know over a year. I mean, yeah, you may have heard of a Hendon Hooker or maybe a Cedric Tillman or a Jalen Hyatt, uh, you know, and you know, like I said, Jalen Hyatt was on the preseason cover magazine in 2021, and they're like, okay, uh, yeah, I've heard this guy, and now, boom, you know, they're they're beloved, and uh, it's just uh, yeah. It, it's it's a little emotional just thinking about just where we were and now where we are now and uh, thoughts and prayers going to the Nebraska football program. Maybe I'll get there one day. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. Those poor people. I can't even uh, laugh, man. No, I feel for it. I don't think any – oh, I feel sorry. There, those those are there, our folks. brothers in the Big Ten if we want to – We've been there. Brothers. We know what it's about, man. <laughs> What's sad for them, though, is there's no coming back from that. They should have never left their conference. Their program's going to be dead. You are correct. Yeah. They can't recruit anymore being in the Big Ten. Yep. That was a mistake. Yeah. Unfortunately. But, you know, the truth hurts, but that's, that's, uh, that's truth. Yeah. Let's move on, guys. Yeah. Awesome, awesome, awesome conversation. Look at 25 minutes already about just uh, – Wow, we have so much to go over tonight. So let's move on. Wow, that's awesome. Guys, what a week it was again for college football. I mean, 
Is it just going to get better each week? This is insane. We had an awesome week one. And then last week was just crazy. It's starting to feel like 2007 all over again. Bingo. Sure. All right, guys. So my question, what did we learn this past week in college football? Um, Morrison, tell me. In a nutshell, go for it. The biggest takeaway for me is the rise of the Sun Belt Conference. Shout out to the Sun Belt. You know, <laughs> 20 years ago, the Sun Belt Conference was a conference that SEC teams just scheduled for homecoming, give them a million-dollar check, beat them by 50 points, and make the alumni happy they came out and watched their team win. But now you've looked at where the Sun Belt Conference is now. They added Marshall. They added James Madison. They added Southern Miss uh, from various conferences. Uh, and then, you know, Appalachian State, you know, they, they've been kind of the Cinderella story for the last 15 years or so, uh, you know, beating Michigan back then. But then going down to College Station and upsetting Texas A&M on their home field, you look Incredible. at Marshall. Incredible. Yeah, I mean, I, I did not see that coming. I, and even Appalachian State, kind of the giant killer of college football, is still shocking yeah. to see that. You see Marshall, first year in the conference, go to Notre Dame and upset a top 10 program. And then, you know, we, we just, you know, buried Nebraska just a minute ago. But Georgia Southern, another Southern Sun Belt team with Clay Helton, former USC head coach, now taking over at Georgia Southern, going to Lincoln and picking up a win. And then Coastal Carolina was kind of the darling of the Sun Belt Conference, still a good team. Um, you know, they're they're in that that conference. And Georgia State, yes, they're they're a good Sun Belt team. Uh, don't know about Arkansas State, but, you know, we'll, we'll skip them for now. <laughs> <laughs> but, I, I mean, I, I'm happy to see the Sun Belt Conference uh, doing very well, just, you know, kind of, you know, like at the one of the, I don't want to say the worst conferences in college football, but definitely one of those uh, overlooked conferences. And, wow. and now I think they're probably the best group of six conference in college football. So that's my Absolutely. biggest takeaway this weekend. Awesome. Dees, what do you got, man? Uh, I'd say Bama's got issues. Now, they've got <laughs> some refs in their pocket, but they've got issues. Uh, they've got some offensive line issues. They've got receiver issues. They've got some stuff to clean up, and they look very beatable right now. They um, are beatable. I would say Jimbo Fisher is mediocre as a coach and it's going yep. to be proven out. And he's, his, his style of play in this day and age, I just don't think is a consistent winner. And uh, they, they laid an egg against App State the other day with horrible quarterback play. Yeah. And Mississippi State impressed me. They went on the road late Saturday night into a hornet's nest at Arizona and they, they won that game. And I think they're going to challenge LSU this coming week. And if they win that one, look out. Uh, they deserve to be ranked, in my opinion, right now. Sure. And I think they definitely will be if they beat LSU. And so I think Mississippi State and Arkansas are right there with, with Alabama uh, contending for the West. Yeah. Wow. Wow. I like it. Yeah, so, I mean, there's really not much more for me to add. Everything you guys said is, I mean, spot on. <laughs> Um, what I would say is, um, college football is not what it used to be, folks. If you don't believe me, then just go back, look at all these non-ranked smaller schools that are now out there competing with these so-called big schools. 20 years ago, when we were growing up, this stuff didn't happen. Okay, didn't happen. And now it, it's happening all the time, so much more frequent. This App State game, guys, I'm telling you right now, is unbelievable. What a story. They go to College Station and beat them. App State! That's an hour and a half away from me in Boone, North Carolina, in the deep mountains of Boone. The Blue Ridge Mountains, guys, I'm telling you. By the way, we love vacationing there. It's an awesome area. Go back and look at the viral video after they won that game. It'll blow your mind. There's this, like, downtown area in Boone. 
It's very cute, very nice, very nice area. Restaurants, all that, cars are driving. All of a sudden, you see a stampede of thousands just rushing the streets. It was unbelievable. Well-deserved. And it's just, it's just again, that's that's one thing you should learn right now, guys. That's one thing I know is football is a different game today, guys. Anyone could win. And it, and it doesn't stop there. Notre Dame, you just mentioned it, gets beat by Marshall? I mean, this is unreal. And it's happening more and more. Hey, one last thing I, you didn't mention that I do want to talk about, and maybe this is me personally, but I learned uh, after Saturday night that I don't think Florida is as good as the polls think they are losing to Kentucky. I was not impressed with Florida really at all Saturday night. Now, the week before it was a different story, right? They came out, they won. That's all you heard about on the news, ESPN. And then, boom, they're ranked. Florida's back. I mean, you were hearing it. I was hearing it all over. Florida's legit. They're good. Billy Napier, wow, well, look what he's done. I'm not saying they're a terrible team. I don't want you to think that because they're not. I just don't think they're that good. And Kentucky laid it to them, buddy. They got the W. And I think Tennessee's going to get the I, I'm I'm much more I much more think come two weeks from now that Tennessee can can definitely get this win. Let's put it that way. Anything can happen, but I think Tennessee's got a great chance of winning in Neyland in a couple of weeks. That's my take. Anything else? Nah, you hit it everything. Cool. Let's go on. Looking ahead, guys, to Tennessee. Florida game. Gosh. I don't even know what to say, really. But I want to talk about it briefly. We we know we're going to win this, uh, this Saturday. We know that's going to happen. So, we're going to go in Neyland Stadium, undefeated, and play Florida. Okay? By the way, guys, and all of our listeners, do you know when the last time Tennessee and Florida were both ranked when they played each other? Uh, I was going to say, like, maybe 2006. 2006. David Dees, what do you think? I have no idea. 2007. Now, it wasn't that long ago. 2017. Okay. You're going to remember this game as soon as I tell you. I think number 24, Florida, beats number 23, Tennessee. Hail Mary game. 26 to 20. When Felipe Franks, did we remember Mr. Franks? He's currently on my Falcons roster. Yeah. Playing tight end. <laughs> <laughs> Throws a 63-yard touchdown mm-hmm. the as the clock label. expires. Oh, it makes me want to vomit thinking. I remember it like it was yesterday. Anyways, that was the last time, 2017. That's when both teams were ranked. And here we are, two weeks. They'll both be ranked again. And the only thing I want to say about that, just uh, – you know, I don't have much to say except I think it's going to be epic. I think it's going to be a heck of a game. I think the crowd's going to be incredible. The environment's going to be nuts. And it'll be one of the top games, certainly, uh, of that Saturday. That's all I can say. Uh, Morrison, Dees, do you have anything you want to add going into Florida? Uh, it's a, it's a big game. I mean, these are the type of home games that our fan base has been chomping at. Uh, no pun intended. Uh, with Florida coming into town, uh, Neyland Stadium is going to be rocking and rolling. There's going to be a lot of recruits there that weekend. Uh, you want to, uh, like I said, get another big statement win early on in this season. Uh, I mean, yeah, I, it's 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 a big game. I mean, it's a big rival game, uh, and it's interesting. You know, a lot of 
Tennessee fans, probably more of our parents' age, remember Tennessee-Alabama being a big rival game. And it's still a big rival game, but it feels like, you know, more of the Gen uh, Gen X uh, to the Millennials probably considers Florida maybe a bigger rival than Alabama because when we were growing up, you know, Tennessee was dominating Alabama, and now the now Alabama's kind of dominating us. But you know, like I said, this is a huge game, uh, huge rival game. SEC East implications intact. I mean, yeah, Georgia's still at the top of the division but you know this i mean like i said this is just a huge game overall and like i said i'm i'm excited for it here in a couple weeks go ahead awesome it's one we got to win we got to get over it and now's the time to do it uh we're getting them at home we're going to have a hornet's nest going on there we got to get them uh anthony richardson certainly capable of coming up here and running all over us and that's still my concern um our linebackers are going to have to be ready to go for that one we'll break that game down uh, yeah. next week but you know you can say what you want it's tennessee florida and it's time to get over the hump and it, it would just be so huge that's why we wanted to win that pit game right so we can set the stage for this one this is the one we really want to get and now's the time to do it exactly if not now then when yeah i mean our schedule couldn't be better this year and they're a very beatable team then <laughs> certainly Hey, and you said it earlier, Bama is beatable this year, guys. I'm not saying we're going to do it, but I'm going to tell you right now. Hey, a there's lot a lot games. of flaws in a lot of these teams out there, guys. And don't let these kids keep getting confidence. They keep winning these games. You start churning yeah. out a Pittsburgh win on the road. You churn out a Florida yeah. win at home, and then you're confident going to LSU. Coming off a of no bye question. week. No you question. go down there and do that, and then you're 5-0 and five and at that point. And you got God, Alabama gracious. coming to town? Are you kidding me? In year two of Josh Heupel? <laughs> Let's go. Whoa! I don't want to put the cart before the horse one game at a time. No. But, hey, we're not no, players, no, no. right? We're not the ones playing the game. We get to talk about no. this stuff. You bring Florida in here in two weeks, and it's time to kick their ass. Gotta love the intensity. Mm. Time for the next segment. One of our favorites. One of our favorites, guys. Let's do it. This is mailbag time, where we get to answer your questions. Once again, guys, we love you. We thank you for listening and following. You know, a lot of these other places, they'll sit there and just spend all day talking about where to follow, where to listen. I'm not going to do that here. I haven't even said it once yet. But I'm going to say it now, and that'll be the only time I really say it. We get these questions from a variety of sources, mostly from our Facebook. If you're listening to this, go check us out on facebook.com slash vol, V-O-L, society. David Morrison, our lead analyst, he does a show every Wednesday evening at 8 p.m. Live, that's where we allow you to partake, ask questions. For the podcast or whatever, if you want to shout out, we'll do it there. We've been having amazing shows lately. Since football season started, I can't believe how good the live show has been going. Morrison, would you agree with that? Oh, it's been some of the best Vol Society lives we've had uh, in the Unreal. two-year run or almost two-year run. Um, it's been a lot of fun, a lot of interaction. Uh, with the chat room all across our social media platforms. Uh, you were on the first, uh, uh, the the Ball State episode and uh, ran yeah. like an, over an hour long, and it was just fantastic. Uh, you know, like I said, be a part of it on uh, Wednesday nights. And like I said, you know, you can you can answer questions live on the show, and I'll answer it, or one of us can. Right. And like I said, it's very relaxing, very fun. Uh, it's a fun just, show. Just kick back and laugh and uh, preview whatever game's coming up. Yep. So there's that. There We're on Twitter as well. Twitter at Society Vol. And we're on YouTube. I would, I would follow our YouTube as well. That's where you're going to get some funny videos. My wife likes to secretly record me on a big game. If a big play happens, I kind of lose my mind. Sometimes that happens. I don't recall what's going on in the moment but she records it and we've had some viral videos and all that barstool sports picked up one you know so be sure to follow us guys 
and on obviously follow us, subscribe to us on our podcast. If you're a volunteer fan, you know, we're glad you're here, but let's go ahead and answer some questions. And be sure to rate and review us on the podcast as well. That would be fantastic. Thank you, David Dees. Yeah. Uh, that helps us out tremendously. Um, and I can't tell you, you know, we, we never really thought about a podcast, but we had fans say, Hey, you need to do a podcast. And we did some research. We looked into the market and said, you know what, let's do it this football season. And we'll, we'll give it a try and see if the fans like it. Uh, the analytics are, uh, I, I I'm impressed. I can't believe how, you know, actually, you know what, I should not be surprised by this. I know vol fans are one of a kind. And you guys are showing out. You're following. You're liking. We just need more subscribers and uh, and reviews on the podcast, whether that be Apple, Spotify, or Amazon. We're on all of these platforms at Good Old Rocky Talk T A L K. Um, but let's get right into it, guys. All right, Rusty Y, Rusty Y from Newport, Tennessee, Newport, Cock County, Cock County, baby. Love it. Rusty, thank you so much for the question here. He asks, what does Tennessee need to improve on the most between now and the Florida game? It's a great question. It's important. And I'll go first. Well, I think on defense, our uh, secondary needs to be sharper. I said this before the season even started. Uh, One of the questions was, what are you most concerned about? I believe this was a few weeks ago before the season started. And that's the one thing I just had, you know, lack of confidence with is our secondary. You know, I'm so sick of, we've been struggling with it. You know, it's third down and long and, and we teams have just been converting, 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 and it's driving me nuts. So I would say, you know, um, going into that Florida game, I still think we need to be sharper in our, our you know, secondary. Okay. Um, let's get three and out, get the defense off the field. Offense, running game. Maybe I'm crazy for saying this, but we need to improve on our running game. That way we're not relying on the pass all the time. You know, and I haven't been super impressed. We've only had two games. I get it. But I haven't been that, you know, hyped up about our uh, our running game. So I want to get something going, you know. I want to get something going with uh, right, small. And, and I'll tell you what, I'd like to start seeing freshman Dylan Sampson get some reps. Morrison, what do you think? Uh, yeah, the, you, you hit it right. Secondary in the rushing game definitely uh, needs improvement on both sides of the ball there. Uh, my, my guess, I guess my, what I want to see going into Florida is special teams. I mean, had a block mm. punt, had yep. a, uh, had a fumble on a return, you know, is flowers confident enough to take one to the house or do we need to put somebody else in? I mean, I mean, even a fair catch, you know, something, the, the confidence on special teams. I mean, I mean, Chase McGrath has done a fantastic job and, 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 and Paxton Brooks has done a good job too, but those yeah. are concerns now. You know, like I said, special teams about cost us the game last week against Pitt. So I want to see that improve big time against – I mean, you will probably see it somewhat with Akron. But definitely going into Florida, uh, if you're pinned back deep in your own end zone, I want to see Paxton Brooks get rid of it. Even whoever's snapping the ball, snap it a little quicker, get it out there. Uh, mm-hmm. And then, like, on the on the return game, uh, who's it going to be? You know, like I said, do you still feel confident in Flowers? Was that just a hiccup in that game? Or is there concerns? Because, you know, special teams is a huge part of what wins and loses ball games. I love it. Great points. And you're right. That almost cost us last week. You're right. David Dees. Yeah, you, you guys hit the big ones already. Um, I would add to that. I, I want to see Brew McCoy get more involved. I want to see him get more comfortable in this offense. Yes. I think when, when you can start more evenly distributing the ball to those guys, throwing to the left side, then the right side, mixing it up, making it a little more balanced, um, that's just going to make it harder to defend. So uh, I agree with everything you guys said. And then just getting Brew McCoy and some of those other receivers involved. They talked yeah. about preseason, you know, bringing in six, seven guys and rotating them at wide receiver. They did that game one against Ball State, and then they got away from it. 
I think only four wide receivers played with the main starters, and then Ramel Keaton got a few few uh, plays, a couple of targets, but uh, against Pitt. So yeah, I just like to see them uh, kind of mix it up and, and get Brew more involved in the offense because I think he's a very special player. That's a great point. Brew is too talented not to be out there getting more, you know, throws coming yeah, his it's way. It's early. It's early. He's going to have to get more comfortable in the offense, and it's a, it's a work in progress. But uh, you'd like to see it by by Alabama and LSU, Alabama, Georgia. You definitely want Brew McCoy uh, yeah. more involved in this offense. Yeah. Awesome. Those are good points, guys. Let's go to our next question. Craig A. from Monterey, Tennessee? Where is that, guys? Where's Monterey? Is it West Tennessee? I think it's somewhere out west. Yeah. There's a Monterey Welcome Mexican restaurant. In not not sure. Yeah, I know where Monterey's is, the Mexican restaurant. That's right. <laughs> but this is not Monterey where Monterey Mexican Get restaurant. Get you some cheese dip and a uh, pollo loco, huh? Oh, or a Monterey See? salad. Monterey yeah, salad, yeah. To me. Yep. I haven't been to Athens in many years. But that used to be my go-to back in the day, guys. The Monterey salad or the, uh, uh, what was it? The uh, Pollo, Pollo, Loco. Was Pollo Loco. Po- Pollo Loco. That was yes, the place. Don't forget about Wong's Palace, Chapman Highway. Anybody ever heard of Wong's <laughs> Palace, Chapman Highway? It's unfortunately not there anymore. <laughs> Brad ate them Shout- single-handedly out of Crab Rangoons uh, during his time in college. So, Shout out to Wong. Wong's Palace. Shout out to Wong's Palace on Chapman Highway. When I was in college, I was a much bigger guy than I am now. And I like to eat. Craig's getting way more than he borrowed. <laughs> Craig's getting way more we than apologize. he asked for with this question. I'm sure Monterey, Tennessee is a wonderful town. Um, <laughs> we're, we're just, yeah, we've certainly digressed. We Thanks for East listening, Craig. <laughs> Craig, we have not forgot about you, I promise. All right. But when it comes to food, we we just, gosh, we have so many stories about food. All right. We love Monterey, Tennessee. Let's get back to you, Craig. So he asked us on Facebook. He says, do you think the SEC East has caught up with the SEC West? Wow. That's an interesting question. David Dees, you want to take this one first? Um, I, I don't know that I would am willing to say that yet this early in the season. Let's see how the season progresses, and let's see the SEC East, in particular Tennessee, Florida, uh, Kentucky. Let's see them put this kind of effort together for an, another year or two or three, but uh, yeah. to to have some consistency there. You've had teams flash in the East for several years, you know, uh, but it, they certainly have in terms of Georgia arriving. Georgia's now just as much of a power in the East as Alabama is in the West. They recruit uh, just like Alabama does, and they, they've obviously now won a national title. So you have them as the uh, big power in the East versus Alabama as the big power in the West. And then you've got, uh, you know, maybe it's a deeper division this year than the West is. I, I think I'd be willing to say that. Would it, would it be fair to say, David, that it's trending that way? Yeah, I think it is. I think it is. Mm -hmm. And then who knows once Oklahoma and Texas join the mix and what all that's going to look like. But as things are concurrent, as things are currently configured, uh, yeah, I think it's heading in that direction. Yeah. That's what I think. If Tennessee gets back like we think they're heading back, then yes, I will say it's It's right. It's trending that way. Yes. Morrison, what do you think, bud? Yeah, uh, I agree with these. You know, it's kind of hard to say right now. I, I I could see a trend heading that way. I mean, you know, right now Texas A&M yeah. has big time question marks after their performance. LSU, uh, you know, who knows what's going on with this with Brian Kelly? Uh, I mean, Alabama's still at the top of the West, but you know, but you're seeing programs that are starting to rise. From, not besides us, you know, Kentucky. Uh, they've kind of been steady where they've been the last few years but they're they're a program that has definitely risen over the last 10 years uh florida you know they're just one or two big players away from really getting back towards the top hopefully we don't see that happen but uh it can it could happen um 
and uh, but it could it could trend that way. I mean, we just gotta see what's gonna happen uh, eventually down the road. And keep in mind, Shane Beamer was omitted from that discussion. He's not oh, helping the gosh. SEC East at all. In fact, I think no, his fan not. base is about to be tired of him pretty soon. The circus oh. is in town. Have I ever mentioned that he's a clown? We're not Shane Beamer fans on this show, are we? Listen, oh, okay, I'm not even going to go there. I, I love his digress. dad. <laughs> Respect to his dad. Well, that's fine, but we're not talking about his dad. We're talking about Shane, the clown. <laughs> Anyways, I, I'm not going to... I I did enough last week on this guy. Okay, let's go to Jamie T. Jamie T from... Knoxville, Where is that Tennessee. <laughs> the 865. The 865. Home of Wong's Palace. All right, please. <laughs> Chapman Highway, Wong's Palace. Go to Google and it's permanently closed, it says. And I probably know good reasons why. It hey, was favorite pretty rest- nasty. Uh, hey, I'm going to ask a question. Favorite restaurant in Knoxville? Go. God, that's a good question. I haven't been... Well... I don't even know if I can say that. I haven't been to Knoxville since 2010. Oh, gosh. Got to get you in town. 2010, David. I, I left to, to go to Los Angeles in 2010. I haven't been back to Knoxville. But I will be at the Florida game, in case you're wondering, in two weeks. It's the first time that I've been there since I left for Los Angeles in 2010. So I hear it's a different place. <laughs> since when I was there. But that's a good question. Um, I guess I could talk about a different, uh, you know, I, I did go to college there. Uh, let me put it to you this way. I'll give you my answer as a student, an undergrad that went there. Now, I want to see if anybody can guess this. This should be common sense if you're, if you, if you talk to a, to a, to a Tennessee undergrad or, Graduate program, student, whatever. Let's see. Anybody have any ideas? What would be my favorite place on campus? Do you like Gus's? Bingo. Gus's Good Time Deli. Guys, I'm telling you, I can't even tell you how many times late at night after a game, I would go and stand in that line and go to Gus's Good... Shout out to Gus's. Good Time Deli right on campus. Hey, say what you want. They make incredible burgers. And they've been around for a long time, and it's definitely a favorite for UTK students, period. All right, David Dees, what's your favorite restaurant in Knoxville? It doesn't have to be on campus. Not on campus. Uh, Sam and Andy's and Louie's. Love Those are my two jams. Grew up eating those. Those are my favorites. Louie's in uh, Fountain City. Louie's out in Fountain City. Louie's Italian. Love their spaghetti, their garlic bread, their onion rings, homemade blue cheese dressing for the salad. Fantastic. I know Sam and Andy's for sure. I haven't been to Louie's, but Sam and Andy's, fantastic. How about you, Morrison? Oh, see, I'm one of these people, even though I've been to Knoxville several times, I've never been to like the big popular places. Like I've never hey, done. I Yale don't Steakhouse. care if it's Subway. You just name whatever you like, buddy. If you go to Knoxville, what's a good uh, meal for you, man? Texas Roadhouse on Turkey Creek. I know, Woo! The, hey, let's, hey, buddy, when I was in college, this is another reason I got to like, you know, my freshman, sophomore year, I was like 300 plus pounds. One of those reasons, because I would go to Texas Roadhouse in Turkey Creek as a freshman two or three times a week, and I would eat all you can on those rolls. Uh, Yeah. Those rolls with cinnamon butter is a heart attack waiting to happen. But you know what? I didn't care, and I ate them three, four, five baskets at a time. Mm -hmm. Wong's for lunch, and then Wong's for lunch, and then Texas Roadhouse's rolls for dinner. You had had it made. I had it made. And then at like one, two in the morning, I would uh, make a trip to Crystal right down oh. from my uh, dorm room. We had a Crystal that would stay open on the strip there. Have you noticed Ray Avenue. J's on their commercials now? The Crystal commercials? No kidding. <laughs> Dude, He's like working in a drive through window. Yeah, it's pretty hilarious. Dude, I would go and get like one in the morning on like, Cumberland what? Avenue on the strip. I'd pull in the drive through one in the morning. I'll never forget that. I'd study whenever I did study. 
And after I was tired of studying or whatever I was doing, I'm number like, one with I cheese. Gotta, I, I gotta eat, man, before I go to bed. Did you get a number one like with cheese? One in the morning. Oh no, no. Remember, I was like three. That's not, not a sack. Three hundred pounds. I, oh, did I did do the sack full. I would do the sack full occasionally, but no, my my go to was a crystal chick combo. Love the crystal chicks. Go with the chicks with a large fry, large Coke, and then I would get a large. Tell me if you ever had these chicken bites. Oh, I think they discontinued those. God, it's because I left Knoxville. <laughs> no one was. Hey, I got another one for you. you. Remember Sawyer's when they were there on campus? Okay, first of all, Sawyer's that is fantastic, David. Everyone listening, if you don't know Sawyer's and you're a Tennessee fan, then you're not a Tennessee fan. 17th Street at the corner, right, David? 17th Absolutely. Street in Cumberland. That's Sawyer's it. is a place that I will always remember growing up, middle middle school, even into I don't know when it went out of business. I think it was it was out of business, I think, when I was in, when I started college, I believe. Um, but I'm gonna tell you right now, they that place was rocking. Good chicken baskets. And their Incredible. sauce was uh, the, Sawyer was very sauce, very similar to like the the Zaxby sauce, but better. God, unbelievable! You know what? We need to do a segment in the next few weeks when it's uh, and talk about just like Cumberland Avenue, some of the places that are the go tos. Like this is unbelievable. It's bringing me back, guys. Sawyer's was incredible. We'll, we'll do that on our bye week episode. There you go. I like it. Let's do it. All right, let's go to another question. God, I love food. I could talk about food. What all was day. the question for the Noswa guy? We need to do like, <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> Morrison. <laughs> we, you we, see what we, I, we went like fifteen minutes talking about every restaurant in Knox County. See? and We didn't even answer his football question. He's yeah. probably never going to ask, ask a question again. Jamie T, I love you, buddy. I still love you. I, ho- I hope you enjoy it, Jamie. I, Thanks for Jamie hanging T. in here with us, Jamie. Hey, bro- brother, and I'm going to tell you right now, Morrison, thank you so much for reminding us, because I'm going to tell you, this question's awesome, and I did, I would not want to miss this one. <laughs> Jamie T. from Knoxville. <laughs> By the way, I'm hungry again. I'm going to go eat here in a minute. Yeah, Jamie T. from Knoxville, Tennessee, he asked on Facebook, is it time for Lee Corso to retire? <laughs> that Jamie has a sense of humor awesome. with that question. So he must appreciate this little food segment, hopefully. He's got to love what we just talked about because this is that is a sense of humor question. I love it. Um, hmm, who wants to take this one? Anybody? Uh, I'll Poorly go Corso. Go ahead, David. Uh, go ahead. My, you know, I used to kind of be anti-Corso probably 20 years ago because he felt like he'd never picked us. But I guess as he's gotten older, I've kind of grown soft to him and kind of – I appreciate – what he does, even though like his prom run was different, but you know, like I said, I, he's going to go out on his own terms, and you know, as long as he's there, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, you know, it is what it is. I, I think that I think with McAfee joining this week, I'm sure that's probably what um, they're probably grooming him towards is to kind of be the next course. Yeah. So, uh. You know, McAfee's very a big time personality. Uh, so, you know, right. I mean, as long as he's there, that's cool. Uh, I like, so I've, I've, but you know, yeah, I could, yeah. Uh, uh, I mean, I don't know. Go ahead, Dave. I think Dave was trying to give like a, a political answer. Good answer, Dave. But I was getting ready to say that. Hey, yeah, it's time. <laughs> it's, it's, it's it's time for it's time for Lee Corso to retire. Hey, I, I enjoyed yeah, Matt. Let's just get right I, to it. He he was pretty good. I, I liked his segment or his uh, episode this week. It was pretty good. But yeah, Lee Corso, it's time to go. It's probably ten years past time to go. Time for him to go. Here here's what I'm going to say about this, guys. I'm going to say this. Lee has always been the face of College Game Day. Period. Yeah, he's. He, and by the way, I looked this up before we started the show. Do you know this guy's been doing this pro this program since it debuted? Do you know? By the way, do you know when College Game Day debuted? Is it nineteen ninety? You're close. Okay. Because Tim Brando was the original host. Nope. So oh, nineteen eighty seven. Eighty seven. So you were close. I mean, I was just a baby then. We all were. Yeah. 
So he's been there forever. Love the guy. I've always enjoyed it. He's one of those guys you wake up on a on a Saturday morning and you see his face on TV. You know, it's one of those things where it's like you, you feel good. You know it's college football time. That's that's what I'm gonna say about that. Um however, there comes a time when you need to know when it's time to hang it up. It's hard to do that. I understand. But if I'm going to answer your question, Jamie, the truth is, yes, he probably should retire soon. Um, did you guys actually have a chance to see the, see the video that kind of went viral a few weeks back? Oh, yeah. Um, of course, so on the air. Did you see that, Dees? Yeah, it's it's just it, sad. I feel feel bad for him. It wasn't even funny. If people are laughing, I'm not even laughing. Like he literally was making no sense, and he was completely, to be honest, he was confused, and so was everyone listening to him. It was sad to see, but I think his days on that show are numbered. Um. But God, what a run he's had! Seriously, I'll say that. That's if he yeah. doesn't step aside soon, they're going to be wheeling him out there like weekend at Bernie's and propping him up on the set. So <laughs> they're going to have to toss <laughs> weekends at Bernie. But God bless Lee Corso. Shout out the weekends at Bernie. You haven't seen that, youngsters? Go and rent it, or uh, we don't rent anymore. What do we do these days? We just we stream. Uh, What's on Hulu? Purchase it. We stream I think it's it on Hulu right now. <laughs> Dude, That's what us kids that do. That is fantastic. Mm-hmm. Could you see what's going to happen? They're going to wheel him out there and they're going to put like ropes and stuff <laughs> around his hands and his face. And you're hey, as long as he's wearing a Davy Crockett hat here in two weeks, he can stay around for a little while. How about that? I like that. I like that. <laughs> gonna have, he's going to be a puppet out there. That's so funny. I'm just envisioning like Corso pulling a rope and it like moves his hand and oh my God. They can so CGI funny. him. They can use him in like a hologram. And- CGI. That's fantastic. Great question, Jamie. Sorry it took us forever to get to that question. Food kind of got in the way with that. So sorry, buddy. All right, let's go to another question. Gary. We have Gary G from Stevenson. Guys, listen to this. Stevenson, Alabama. Vol Nation's everywhere, man. You got Vol fans all over the country. All right. Gary, we are very glad you're with us. Stevenson's not far from me here in in Chattanooga. Really? Okay. Okay. All right. So his question is, do you think Dylan Sampson will start to play more? Well, that's a good question. And I actually, you know, mentioned that earlier on things I would like to see improved and, you know, things we need to, that I'd like to see going into the Florida week. Right. So, uh, so I think you already know my answer there. Um, well, the answer is, I don't know, but I hope so. I hope so. I think he's a great player. I know he's a freshman, but I would like to see him get in there and help the, uh, the running game. So yes, Gary Morrison, what do you got? Yeah, I, I agree. I, um, I think we'll start seeing it probably this Saturday, maybe uh, when we have a huge lead with Akron. But y- you need to have that third running back. Like I said, we've seen small and we've seen right in the struggles with the running game. Um, if I, I would love to have Samson in there, uh, a few t- get a few touches out there, get a three running back rotation. I mean, you're not going to run it. 40, 45 times a game, but definitely keep a fresh running back out there. Uh, I'm not sure what he does blocking wise or if he can catch out of the backfield, but if he has some traits, yeah, take advantage of that too. Um, like I said, especially, I remember Jerry Mack talking about this last year. Um, you've got to have five healthy running backs to go through a season. And, uh, you know, we saw last year Ty John Evans leaving and, uh, you know, injuries was small and right, and it kind of got depleted by the time we got to the bowl game. And I think you got to you got to have some guy. I mean, you have five guys in your running back room, but you need to have that playing experience instead of just uh, practice touches. So, yeah, yeah, they're they're so thin. They're going to have to get him more involved. 
And uh, I'm sure the reason he probably did not play this week against West Virginia, if I had to guess, is because of pass protection um, and just whether he was going to be able to hold up against the pass rushers of West Virginia and as much as, or excuse me, Pittsburgh, as much as they like to get after the quarterback. But uh, every time Josh Teipel talks about Dylan Sampson, he just raves about him. He, he gushes over him. So I think he's going to uh, start playing more and more. And, you know, I'd say by the middle of the end of the year, he's going to be a factor as the number three back. Yeah. I agree. Guys, we've gone an hour and six minutes. My goodness, the show just keeps getting longer. It's time to wind it down. So let's finish off with a couple of questions and then we're done here. Thank you guys for, uh, for, you know, your questions tonight. Fantastic. Keep them coming. All right, guys. So we have Akron this week. I guess I'll say, um, what are your thoughts on the game? Morrison. Yeah, um, I'm not expecting much out of this game. Um, yeah, a lot, very similar to Ball State. Uh, probably will show a little bit more than what we did with Ball State, but I you know, expect pretty much kind of going through the basics, kind of cleaning up some stuff that got exposed with Pitt and just go out there and put up a, a big offensive showing. Um uh, the only thing I know about Akron, uh, Joe Moorhead, who used to be the head coach at Mississippi State, is now at Akron uh, as their head coach. I think this is his first year. Uh, so some familiarity uh, for Tennessee fans there. But, uh, yeah, I'm not expecting much. Uh, they got shut out by Michigan State uh, over the weekend. So just go out there, clean up some mistakes, uh, play a, a nice, solid game, and uh, let's get ready for Florida. Yeah. David Dees? Uh, get your starters in there for a quarter and a half, you know, and get them out. Let's get out of this game healthy. Yep. And, uh, you know, it's an opportunity. I, I'm just thankful they're playing Akron this week. Originally, if you guys will remember, they were scheduled to play Army this week. Correct. And the more you look at that, we bought out of that game, I think it was like $100,000 or whatever, they paid them to not play it. Correct. And they run that funky, you know, triple option style uh, offense. So you're only going to see it one time in a season. You're going to scrap that game plan as soon as you're done. So I'm just thankful that we're not playing that game this week, the week before Florida, and we get to play somebody. We can go out, work our stuff, get in, get out, get it over with without a whole lot of preparation or thought put into it. And we can go ahead and start looking ahead to Florida even now, you know. So not having an army in the schedule is a yeah. big deal. Um, thankful we got out of that. And I think Fulmer is the one that got us out of it. So shout out to Fulmer for doing that. But uh Anyway, let's just get out of this game healthy. Big and, Phil, uh, we love you, buddy. Yeah. yeah. Let's get out of it healthy. Cool. Yeah, my thoughts on Akron. Uh, <laughs> well, what do you want me to say, guys? Um, they played Michigan State last week. They lost 52 to nothing. Did you hear me? 52 to nothing. Zero. They play Tennessee Saturday, and they're going to lose by even more. That's really all there is to, to say about that. Well, they went in week one to overtime with St. Francis of Pennsylvania and won 30 to 23. So these guys are bad. We scheduled two MAC teams this to year. To the bone. And, and they're both. St. Francis of Pennsylvania? Both bad MAC teams. So Bad to the bone, baby. Line opened at, at 50. Be. I think it's down to 47 and a half now, but it opened at 50. 50 point spread. Tennessee is the favorites. And I actually think they're going to cover that. <laughs> well, we'll get to that in just a second with our predictions. Did I hear this right? I saw, I glanced at it. You know how you get alerts on your phone from ESPN and stuff like that? I could have sworn, maybe I dreamed this, but did I see this right where it said that it was like the highest like spread or something? Um. For this Tennessee, Tennessee I believe Akron it is. Game. I believe it is. Yeah, something like that. That's a that's an incredibly high spread. And who knows? I mean, you don't you don't play your starters the whole game, so I mean, who knows? But I. Well, that's true. We'll get to that's that. true. Awesome. All right, guys, let's finish it up. Last question of the show here. That's been a good one. What are your score predictions for Saturday against Akron? How about we go with David D's first. Tennessee 59, 
The Zips, six. Okay. Morrison. Go Tennessee, 61, Akron, three. Going to be ugly. Oh, it's going to be ugly. I'm going to go Tennessee, 98. I'm just kidding. I'm going to go Tennessee, 63, Akron, zero. (laughs) It's It's going to be be ugly. It's going to be an empty stadium by halftime. This ball game's on ESPN Plus, so if you, you got to have the ESPN Plus app to be able to watch this game. <laughs> That's how big this game is, guys. Yeah. You guys you remember know, back in the know. day, you'd have to have pay per view to watch it, and you'd have to go get the box and bring it to your I'll house. I'll never forget you that. Remember that. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Unless you had a legal wow. satellite. Yeah. Your announcers for Saturday is uh, Drew Carter and Aaron Murray, and uh, a fellow Charlotte connection. Uh, Who's the, Ashley Strum? She works for NBC in Charlotte, Brad. You may know who she is. Uh, she has a very long last name. The side. What are we shouting out? What about uh, the, the announcers for? Uh, really? Uh, yeah, Ashley Strum Strumbaroli. I'm I'm butchering the name. Anyways, I don't know. Doesn't matter. Uh, Drew Carter, and Aaron Murray on the call for Saturday. Cool. Oh, real quick before we get off, David, because we talked about this last week, who was announcing the game last week, and you said, oh, I love him. Who was it? Was it um, Sean Madonna? Sean. So you're like, oh, yeah, I love him, too. He's great. Did you guys see the uh, hot mic? Yeah, we were talking about that off air. Situation. What I are thought your it was a, yeah, I thought it was a bit of a reach, but you know, I could see where some Tennessee fans got upset by it. Okay. Nah, I thought they didn't do anything wrong. No, I didn't think so either. I mean, I know some people are talking I, about their body language, like they were like, "Oh, they probably want to pit win." Well, I mean, they just called it a college football game for four and a half hours. So. I'm just glad they didn't say something stupid and ruin their career over it, like Tom Brenneman did last year. Oh gosh, and seriously, it happens so field. much. No, I was very glad to. I tell you though, wouldn't you think? I I feel like if I was in that kind of business, man, it happens so much. The hot mics and stuff, and people's careers are ended mm-hmm. over this stuff. If it were me, and maybe it's easier said than done, man. If I'm on one of those shows and that's my job, I'm not saying crap. No, until that mic like is a loaded weapon. Be careful what you use it. I'm not saying crap. I don't care if the guy says, and we're off. Until I see that mic ripped off of me and turned off, man, I'm not, I'm not doing it. Yeah. You would think they would learn. I don't understand it. Anyways. Well, they didn't do anything guys wrong think, in this case. Yeah. They did not. They did not. <clears throat> do, you guys, uh, do you guys have any last words before we, uh, before we shut it down tonight? Awesome show. I'm hungry. Right. Let's go eat some leftovers. I've got some leftover Chinese food in the fridge. Let's get it. Oh, go God, I'm jealous. <laughs> Probably go eat some potato chips or something downstairs. Yeah. Uh, I'll be there Saturday for the Akron game. So. Oh, uh, wow. So I, I do have okay. a ticket for that. Uh, so check out our Vol Society uh, Facebook page, and uh, I'll be posting stories throughout the game. Uh, and like I said, I'm excited to see. This will be the first time I get to see the new renovated Neyland Stadium. So I'm excited to see all the new renovations in person besides pictures and stuff. So looking forward to that. Great. Saturday. Yeah. Be awesome, sure to man. keep us up to date. Great on time. The, the, yeah. On the Facebook page, David pictures, mm-hmm. videos. That's cool, man. Well, enjoy the game. I'll be there in two weeks. Mm-hmm. All right, guys. Well, this has been a, a great episode. Thank you for joining us this evening. Have a wonderful, glorious week. Fall temps. We get, we're get we waking up in the morning and it's 50 degrees. You know what that tells you? Fall is here. That better excite you. Have a glorious week. Get out early in the morning. Get a cup of coffee and just smell that fresh air. We love you guys. Go Vols, beat Akron.